Welcome to this episode of WikiWalks, a short podcast devoted to some of the more intriguing and, huh, who knew, articles that you can run across in the weird world of Wikipedia. I'm your host, Chris Grismer. Invariably, during the 50,000 hours a month I spend watching YouTube, I find myself drawn to old classic Monty Python sketches that, honestly, I could just recite verbatim even if playback was muted, And also invariably, this leads me to watching every single Holy Grail clip on the internet. It was during one of these recent Python binges that I reheard the line, "'Tis no ordinary rabbit!" And I was immediately reminded of one of the lesser-known assassination attacks on a sitting American president. I have zero doubt that you are confused right now. And that's how rabbits work. Mind games, gaslighting, such is the way of the cottontail. But yes... A pivotal moment in American history took place on April 20th, 1979, when our 39th president, Jimmy Carter, was on a fishing trip near his hometown of Plains, Georgia, and was attacked by an oversized swimming rabbit. Months after the fact, the White House press secretary mentioned the incident, and it's been part of presidential lore ever since. Of all the crises that President Carter faced in 1979, gas shortages, hostage-taking, runaway inflation, his bizarre encounter with a crazed swimming rabbit on a Georgia lake was as damaging as any to his image. The incident crystallized an emerging sense that Carter was just a dude in over his head. And, you know, the view was disputable. Carter had gotten off to a pretty strong start as president with his Nobel Prize-winning achievement of forging the Camp David peace accords between Israel and Egypt. But by the time the killer rabbit story broke on a sluggish news day in August of 79, many of Carter's efforts to project himself as a forceful leader had fizzled or backfired. He's a peanut farmer, after all. Chief among those was his crisis of confidence speech given on primetime TV in July. The public initially liked Carter's call to action. With God's help and for the sake of our nation, it is time for us to join hands in America. And gave him an 11% bump in the polls. But that was before Ronald Reagan and other rivals labeled it as the malaise speech and used it to portray Carter as a pessimist and a wimp. And you know what? If you'd been waiting for four hours to get gas, you probably wouldn't be happy either. Then came the backwoods mammal that approached Carter as he fished on a pond, hissing as it bore down on his boat. Carter, who'd grown up in the country, calmly used his paddle to splash water at the critter and scared away. But a photo of the encounter that the White House very unwisely released to the press made the president look somewhat comical and small. How is a guy who let a rabbit get the drop on him supposed to guard the U.S. from attack by the Soviet Union? Pop culture erupted with mocking commentaries, cartoons, novelty songs. The best of that bunch was a song by Tom Paxton called I Don't Want a Bunny Wunny. The Washington Post ran a front page headline, front page, mind you, President Attacked by Rabbit, complete with a Jaws parody illustration of a rabbit about to surface under his boat. The story was used time and time again by journalists and political opponents who wanted to portray Carter as hapless and ineffectual. He recounted to CNN in 2010, A rabbit jumped in the water and swam towards my boat. When it got almost there, I splashed some water with a paddle. Which is the closest thing the Carter administration ever got to get off my plane. In my research on this topic, I learned that there actually are large, mildly violent swimming rabbits out there, called swamp rabbits, and they're the largest variety of cottontail, weighing in at four to five and a half pounds. And while they aren't man-eaters by any stretch, in fact, they're herbivores, rival males will sometimes fight each other to the death, using their teeth and sharp hind claws. Eh? All right, yeah, you know, get infection, I don't know. Anyhow, I digress. I suppose in hindsight, it makes me actually kind of pine for the days, whenever this was considered a controversy and a scandal. But I suppose any time it's just you out on a boat, lonely lake, and you don't know what's coming to attack for anyone, well, it might actually be quite the hair-raising experience. <laughs>